Good evening. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And we're going to have Ms. Hyman's group lead us in the pledge. If I can have the students up front, please. Good. I'll give you time to get to my feet. <laughs> Thank you. First, we're going to move for the approval of the consent agenda, which was the minutes of the March 12th, 2024 regular board meeting, and then the counseling program evaluation, which was in your packets. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Call the question. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Are abstaining. Next, moving down to the financials, March bills totaling seven hundred and eighty-three thousand four hundred twenty-nine dollars and forty-seven cents, and the financial reports, which were also included in your packet. I'll move. Second. It's been we, moved and seconded. We're open for discussion I now. To say, I'm waiting for Jack to see if we've got questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, yes, we're open, for, we're open for discussion, you said? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, Caleb and I met and we went over several things that I picked up out of the bill paying thing. And I wanted to put out a kudo to him because we discovered last time that somebody, I can't remember who it was, charged us $1,100 in finance. Uh, charges and he, I don't know what he did. He got down his hands and knees or something. But anyway, we got it back. <laughs> so that was a good thing. I wanted to put that kudo out there. Uh, and he's going to try this month because R and P Lumber charges seventy-one dollars in finance charges. Whether <laughs> you're successful or not, I don't know. Uh, we did buy a bunch of new tables. He's still trying to spend that excess money we have, so we bought a whole bunch of new tables that we probably didn't need, but we did. And to clarify, that excess, that excess money is in the food service program and can only be spent in the food service program. So just wanted to make sure it can only be spent on equipment, and some of the equipment we needed were new tables. There are new tables at the high school and also in this building as well. Did we buy two mixers? We did. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yep. We did. Yeah. I picked well, up that one because I didn't want made sure I wanted to make sure we didn't pay for the same mixer twice, so mm -hmm. we got two new mixers. Uh, I guess I that's a, all that's all I had there. I just have you. clarification. What in the world is Eagle Eye timing? It is track timing equipment for official reporting on the races. I figure that was. And we remodeled the bathroom on the HRC. That is so that was some of your ARP. S or kind of like S or COVID money that needed to be spent, and they used it to remodel the restroom that the community uses over for the social work team. Mm -hmm. It's on the back side of this building. ARP, that's what it was called, the ARP grant. $10,950. Which I believe finishes up that grant just about entirely. Mm -hmm. well, Pretty well, close. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I want to report to the, the uh, students at the St. Connor Career Center are building the new restrooms on the golf course and the electricity's in the water's in the concrete's poured uh, and they've got the walls framed up so it's really coming along good and we're, we're tickled they can do that for us mm -hmm. i didn't get a lot of, a lot of things circled this time so okay <laughs> is there any more discussion or items for clarification hearing none I'm going to call the question myself. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Sorry, Brian. It's all right. Anyone opposed? Are recusing? Thank you. Um, next, we're going to look to adopt the agenda for the remainder of the meeting. Um, it is as published and as printed in your packets. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by aye. 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 Anyone abstaining? Recusing. Next, moving down to old business. Um, we've had the old business of the uh, city land exchange, and I'm going to let Mr. 
Pettit talk about that since that has been a, uh, a work uh, since he pretty much started here, at least the last 12 months? So. Yeah, so the city has had their second reading, which for the way that their board operates is the equivalent of a motion to approve. So it, it is in effect approved by the city of Marshall. Uh, the survey is complete. It is 123 acres uh, at the completion of survey at the agreed upon boundaries. And everything has worked out well with the verbiage of that between our legal, the city's legal, city council, and the things that you guys have asked questions of. I believe we've gotten everything answered. So we're now set to close. I believe the closing is June, possibly, and we've set the terms for when they'll bring down the smokestack, et cetera. So with a motion to approve the contract, it is done except for closing and all, all terms agreed upon. No exchange of dollars. This is an exchange of Eastwood for the surplus land at the Hab Center site, giving us access out there to the highway for future expansion and growth, whatever the district may need in the future. Are we tearing down Eastwood as yes. it stands right now? Yeah. As it stands right now, that is, that is set that way in the contract. Uh, that doesn't mean the city won't be able to request of the board an sure. amendment, but as it stands and was, is going to be closed upon, it would include tearing that down. It, it also includes that easement of the railroad as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. And by 2025 or 2026, I can't remember. Was... We extended it out to 2026 mm -hmm. just to be safe. Yeah. If we were tearing it down, if we had any abatement issues or unforeseeables, I think that's far longer than we need, but that's what we decided upon in the final language was 2026. Smokestack comes down too, right? Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. I thought that would be. Yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> About mm -hmm. the same terms, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so moved. Second. So we moved and second. Is there any additional conversation or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any abstaining? Are recusing for personal reasons? Moving back to reorganization of the board. Um, and to certify the annual election results. I'll turn that over to Mr. Pettit. All right, so I believe, I believe we need to begin with the motion to approve the annual election results. So I will call for a motion. So move. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? All right, I'll call for a vote, please. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, and now we need the oath of office to our elected members. Before he does that, I would like to uh, give Dr. Meyer a chance to say anything that she'd like to uh, as going out on the board. Uh, she chose not to rerun, but has been sitting with me for the last six years, so thank you. Oh, I, uh, I don't want it to be about me. Um, it's a close of a chapter, and uh, we were just talking earlier, uh, the district's in better shape today than it was six years ago when we first came on. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Anyway, here's this. <laughs> <laughs> you can put that. Nobody else will be made there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jack. Oh my gosh. Now it's going to be. Jack's been in my garden. Oh, that's very nice. Oh. Yeah. Well, thank you for serving. I appreciate it. With my bag on. Great. Okay. <laughs> on three, one, two. Thank you very much. You need a book in your hand. This is the same dresser for six years. I'm going to be And then you will also take the off. I love you so much. Oh, I guess you can go on. I'll have you guys step forward right here. Uh, Ms. Reno is going to read the oath of office to you. If you guys want to step forward, and she will give you a short <laughs> bit.
<laughs> Welcome to the board, Ms. Staley, and congratulations on your election to the seat and to your re-election, Mr. Jakes. Okay, so we will be calling election of officers. I'll run this. Oh, you got more flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he had those. We might have some more. Okay, we'll begin with the election of board president, and after the election of the board president, I'll turn the meeting back over to him or her. Uh, at this time, and we will have a discussion for these motions as we go through and discuss. I need, am asking for a motion for president, board president. I nominate Brian Jakes. Second. I have a motion uh, by Harry Carroll and a second by Matt Smith. Any discussion? Yeah, I think he's done a great job for the last few years. Yeah. Okay. It's the last time I'll say it publicly, but that's all right. Okay. If there's no further discussion, I will call um, for a vote. All those in favor to please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. With no one opposed, the motion passes, and I will turn it over to the board president to conduct the rest of the reappointment. Thank you all for uh, having faith in me for another year or electing not to want to have this problem. <laughs> Either way. So. Um, next, we're looking for election of vice president uh, for that position as well. And I would like to nominate Matt Smith to remain as vice president. I'll second. <laughs> I think, yeah, I agree. Hearing no other nominations and seeing uh, the head nods, I would ask for acclamation to uh, have Mr. Smith remain as vice president by a sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Herb Stain? I'll probably abstain. Mm -hmm. I abstained as well on the last one. <laughs> you can vote for yourself. Yeah. Uh, next, looking for election of treasurer. I'll nominate Jack Lentz. I would also nominate Brad Shepard for that position. We do have to have seconds for either <laughs> one or none. <laughs> Second, Brad. No offense, Jack. There is a second for Brad on that position. Is there a second for Matt before we, I'm uh, sorry, for Jack before we begin voting? Yeah, you're going to get to be the treasurer. <laughs> but that does not change any of the power of the checkbook. Hearing none, I will uh, ask for nominations, uh, excuse me, I will ask for, by the sign of I, for Brad Shepard for the position of treasurer. No. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those against, please say nay. Anyone abstaining? Abstain. Abstain. Okay. Hmm. Next, looking at election of secretary. For board secretary, I'm going to nominate Ms. Mona Michaels. Second. Mm. Whoa, whoa, was that the secretary or deputy Sorry, secretary? Sorry, did I skip over? That was for secretary, yes, sir. Hmm. Deputy secretary uh, comes as assistant secretary. That, that, that. Who put this guy in 
George. Ryan, <laughs> 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 right, this? Set up a secretary and a assistant secretary, deputy secretary. Yes, sorry, no, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, well, she's the secretary. She is currently, yes. Okay. I'm confused. <laughs> so, so <laughs> the current secretary okay. is Ms. Reno. Okay. And okay. so we're nominating for future secretary going forward. Okay. And so yeah. the deputy secretary acts as the assistant, and they are lack of a better term at times could be interchangeable as needed. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that secretary Brian Jakes did and to of the board, board, not of the board. Yes. Yes, right? to the board. Secretary to the board, not of the board. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So did we get a second? Okay. I second Mona. I think I did. Are there other nominations for secretary to the board? Thank you, Jack, for making sure I said that correctly. All those in favor of Ms. Michaels as secretary to the board, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? Next, we would move down to election of the deputy secretary to the board. I nominate Denise Reno. I'll second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? And the last thing is that we have uh, appointments of delegates that uh, go and voice our uh, opinions to the MSBA Association as delegate and alternate delegate. Um, as needed when called upon uh, to represent us through MSBA. Ms. Green, I believe you have served in that capacity over the last year, uh, yeah, I think as I, well as Dr. Meyer. I was kind of the alternate, I think. You were the alternate I think. last year? I don't think we officially had an alternate, but she served unofficially as the alternate. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're making it official now. Okay. So would, these are nominations for the I would for nominate the Amy as the delegate and Ms. Staley as the alternate, if she would accept well, I second her as the, de as the alternate. Can I do that? Or is this all yes. one? Can you second? Okay. I second Amy. Second. Okay. You're so, oh, yeah. Matter, you are dividing your uh, motion to two parts yeah. as a as a motion for a, the delegate to be uh, Ms. Green and then for the alternate to be uh, Ms. Staley. Yes. Okay. And then we will have a second <clears throat> then by Mr. Shepard for Mrs. Green and then Mrs. Green as a second for Mrs. Staley. Yeah. Well, better for the minutes, isn't it? So since there are two motions on the floor, the first will be for delegate, and that would be for Ms. Green to be the delegate to MSBA. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any abstaining or recusing? I guess I abstain. Amy's in Got it. And then for the alternate to MSBA would be for Ms. Staley. Mrs. Staley, sorry, I'm bad about Ms. I'm from the South. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And would you like to abstain as well? Yes. <clears throat> Next, we'll move down to public comments after all that action. If anybody else wants to uh, chime in on this uh, conversation we have going on tonight. Hearing none, you are sure welcome to make your way up here. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Hyman of Eastwood Elementary School is going to come and give us a presentation uh, this evening, and she has brought some help with her in the form of some strutting young ladies and one gentleman, I believe, if I don't see any others. Oh. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for having us. We're very excited to be here. I, I think Wesley's going to ask you to grab a mic to make sure everyone on the feed can hear you. My personal voice is loud enough. <laughs> I, I think it would have worked. But just <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Okay. Thank you so much for having us. We are so excited to be here. I have um, wonderful members of our Eastwood family uh, with me tonight, and I'm going to let them practice their public speaking skills and introduce themselves in just a minute. Um, but we are going to talk about data and iReady, but I talk a lot about data and assessments and using data to drive our instruction in my board report and we talk a lot about it at the building level but we just really wanted to give you all an insight as to what does that really look like well what do you look at what do you discuss you know what what do we talk to the kids about what do they actually use and so we are going to try to make this quick but meaningful for you as well okay you. Okay, so the first slide that we're looking at, this is one of our iReady reports. Um, there are many that we could look at. This is a building report. Um, it is a projected proficiency for the MAP test. Um, and it is building-wide. The top graph is showing um, how many students they are predicting for the third and fourth grade building if they reach their typical growth which is the average annual growth for students at the grade level baseline placement level. The bottom bar graph and the visual that you're seeing there is how many students they're predicting to be proficient if the students um, in the third and fourth grade meet their stretch growth, which is the growth recommended to put students who are performing below grade level on a path of proficiency and students who are performing on grade level on a path towards advanced proficiency. So we had a lot of discussion about this data and you know when we talk about data we're very real. But where we are because if we don't know where we've been we don't know where we're going and we actually have some um, more visuals to show you and those visuals and those graphs are great. So we're excited to see the progress that's happening. Okay, I'm Carrie Harvey. I'm the instructional coach for third through fifth grade. So this report is an example of what teachers can use to see their students' progress towards their typical and stretch growth. So if you look at the first and third column, several students have met and are exceeding their typical growth and are working toward achieving their stretch growth. Then if you look at the last two columns, it shows how students scored on their beginning of year iReady diagnostic. And then the last column is how they did at the middle of year, I ready diagnostic. We have not taken the end of year, that will be soon. Um, let's see. So if you look at the very first row, that top kiddo, you can see that at the beginning of the year, they started at a late fourth grade level and they grew to grade seven, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. The third kiddo grew from grade one to grade three. So this shows students at all levels um, of achievement and how they are growing and gaining throughout the year. I'll hand it over. I'm Wendy Hartley and I'm the fourth grade teacher at Eastwood. And after the admin get their reports, then we take it and we break it down even further. So these are what we call data chat reports. And so we are given the report, and so when the kids take the actual diagnostic, it breaks it down in different domains with phonemic awareness, phonics, um, high frequency words, vocabulary, comprehension, um, both fiction and nonfiction. And so then we can see their growth, and then we pull the kiddos up 
and we have these little data chats. And so they are given this same report, and so they look at it, and we just talk about their growth, what their goals are, and what they can do to um, achieve, to be successful. Um, the second one over here is the year-to-date growth. It's like their, their first diagnostic and their second. Right. So, and then we will soon be able to get the third diagnostic on there as well. This is really helpful for us when we have data chats with the kiddos because it talks, we can actually show them this bar graph and say, this is the growth at 33%. That's 33, that's 33, that's 33 points that that person went up mm -hmm. from their fall diagnostic to their winter diagnostic. And it's really good for us to be able to talk to them and show them this um, because it gives us a chance to talk about their strengths, their weaknesses. It gives us a chance to talk about, like, oh my gosh, celebrate. Like, oh, look how much you've grown. This is amazing. This is, this is fantastic. And it also gives us a chance to say, okay, we did this. Now what do you think you're going to be able to do next? Because they're getting ready to take it next week. And so it's extremely, we've already had this chat with them and talked to them about it and got them all excited about it. And so that just gives us a chance to do that. The, the one before that, the slide before that. Oh, did we just want to start? No, I just, oh. just that this is an important oh, process. Yeah. We really stress that we want them to be on it all about time, and all about time is about 20, 25 to 30 minutes. And so if you look at it, 80% of the school is on it, at least that, that amount of time. That's a pretty good percentage of people mm -hmm. that are on it. And we, want, we really want them to score 80 to 100% on whatever they're doing in MyPath. Mm -hmm. And MyPath is, so if you guys didn't know, it's like, what they need right now. So every child in the room is doing something that they need right now. It's not all the same. They're not all doing the same thing. And so it's fantastic to see that 81, that they're, that they're scoring 81%. That's an average of what they're scoring on those, those my past activities. And so that's what we want too. We want to have that kind of thing. We talk about that all the time. Like, what, you know, you know, that's what they're doing. <laughs> and we, we have a lot of incentives to go behind us. But it's okay, because we all have incentives. How do, you, how do you get to be over the owl time amount? So those that are in that 30 to 49 range, that 12%? Okay, so sometimes, oh, yeah. they, they will be on a lesson more than one day. Like okay. I may have kiddos, it, it takes them two or three days okay. to get through through one lesson. Okay, thank you. And there's not very many that are on that. It, that is an interesting thing. <clears throat> yes, usually it's only during owl time. I got Yeah. We get to show this show this amazing visual. Next one is the visual. The I next, like that. Okay. Yeah. So here's what they look like. That's a data check. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're messy and they're all over. But they this is what we talk to them about. This is what we show them and then we and we make we make the graphs and we talk about like what they it's a medical, like they, they, they take the fall and then they they have that score. And then when we meet with them in the winter time, we have that data already, and so we say, oh my gosh, you made you made this goal for yourself, you made it! And then we have this big, like, they get something for it, and we, we introduce them in the assembly, and these are all big deals, it's all big deals, yeah. And so you see, like, you met the goal, woohoo, you met the goal, and then what do you want to do next time? So you see. And they're different, too, because depending on where you store and how big your, your bar needs to be as well, like, you know, they have... I don't know. It's, just, it's good stuff. It's really good conversation you have with them. I love data chats because you get to talk with them one on one. And it's just, it's just good times. We have really two individual students, too. Okay. You ready for the kiddos to talk? Are you ready for them? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You've been listening all day to your teachers. You're ready, aren't you? <laughs> okay. So you see this one right here? Wait, who, what's your name? My name's Ezra. I'm in Miss Happington's class. All right. We do these incentives, 100 on my path. So when you get like 100%, we put our name on it. So it started off at 6, and now we're at 800. And once you get all the 100s, we uh, take, we uh, whoever has them gets to go to like, gets to wear their pajamas or stuff like that. Dance like parties. Party, dance parties. It's eight 100s in the month. So yes. like right now, this is their April one. So My name's Timley, and um, what we do is, if you see the second picture there, uh, we just fill out those on Friday, and like, if you got like an 80% or higher, we get to stick it on like our thing we're working to. Like, sometimes we've got donuts and. Uh, 
pizza, popcorn, banana splits, and stuff like that. And on the hundred chart, on the hundreds, they get to do it as they get 100%. So if you hear them say, get 100%, and they go over, and go right on the thing. <laughs> but they do it in real time, like I mean, as they get it done, as they get that accomplishment done. What's your incentive right now? What is it right now, you guys? Brownie. That's what it's excited about. You, okay, so hold on. Fourth grade is doing pizza, and third grade is doing brownie. <laughs> Brownies and ice cream and sauce. So exciting. Okay, what is those things, guys? You want to talk about it? You guys want to talk? Okay, yeah. Turn around to where you are. Turn around and talk to them. Yeah. She will. Here she comes. Uh, my name is Maya, and that picture right there is when we get 80% or higher. We get to put it on there, and you can see it's popcorn. We got popcorn in a movie that day, and we get like that one's like brownies. Mm -hmm. Ava's talking about that one, and now it's your turn. Yeah. Okay. Ready. My name's Ava, and last like today, this time we're doing brownies, and we're so close to filling it out, and we get a treat every time we fill it out. Hi, my name is Macy, and I'm in Miss Hartley's class, and we do these data chats where we earn something every time um, we fill it out completely, and when we do it on Fridays, like... Yeah, can we go back to that screen? Sorry, there you go. Like that over there. <laughs> Get with the program. <laughs> These are the things that we fill out. Mm -hmm. We like track the sheets and the data. We do reading and math. And there's different ones that, oh, like some are multiplication and division, and the others fractions. And there's also like punctuations, geometry also. <laughs> That's good. Um, sometimes it's really exciting when um, I'm walking around the room and I am seeing what they're doing, and all of a sudden they'll go, oh my gosh, that's what we just learned today in math, or, or yesterday, or whatever. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So it, it's showing that it's meeting them where they need to be met. It's, you see that way more. Like right after Christmas, we saw that happening so much more. Like a lot of kids were saying, we just did this in a lesson just yesterday. And I'm like, yes. Also, we get Starburst when we get a hundred. <laughs> we're not we're not advertising that in third grade. I don't know, she's she's crazy. Yeah. Oh on the on the go back to the popcorn, the, the incentive on that, like eighty to a hundred, explain to like like how many like how many do you have to get of that eighty to a hundred in a month? At first we had to get ninety, but now we're to and then we had to go to hundred and now we're at hundred and fifty. Yeah. Mm. Because they were getting it fast, fast, fast. So we had to <laughs> up the number a little bit. Because there's a big incentive we're just talking about. I mean, so yeah, we had to get it a little bit higher number. But they're, they do a great job. I mean, they are rocking and rolling in, during our time. So we love this. And we love this is kind of lit, 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 lit a fire underneath them, which mm -hmm. is nice, mm -hmm. which is nice. Ezra's ready. We have, oh, sorry, Ezra. Sorry. We've, got, we've had done a lot of like incentive things. We've done candy canes, and I can't remember the other ones. Candy canes, popcorn, what else? Uh, pizza, pizza. Cookies. 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 Oh, yes. I can't remember the other one. We did, we did donuts, ice cream, uh, pizza, popcorn. We're doing brownies. Okay. Okay. So I have a question for the kiddos. So we've talked a lot about popcorn and brownies and lots of goodies. So talk to everybody about how do you feel like the data chats are helping you with your learning? <laughs> Ezra had read it. Give me the mic. You're going to move from there to here, Ezra. Right. <laughs> so they push us to like get hundreds or eighties so that we can get that prize because 
Like, who wouldn't want a brownie? Love <laughs> 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 Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when your teacher you when your teacher talks to you about where you scored on your I ready assessment in the fall, and then you look at maybe your winter score, and now you're going to look at your spring score. So how does that help you in your learning and making goals and to know where you are? If you didn't have the data check, do you think you would know where you are in that process and how well you're doing? Probably not. Okay. So when you sit down and talk with your teacher and have your data chat, how does that help? It helps by us, like, let us knowing what we did and how far we grew. Great job. Thank you. Okay. Good job. I just want to brag on these third graders right here. They all three of these met their goals. But they chose a goal for themselves in the fall, and they met it in the wintertime. So I'm super proud of them. We're very proud of all of your progress. And thank you for being great. Yeah. Right. Same for the fourth graders. I'd like to thank uh, Mrs. Hyman for bringing her group in, Ms. Sappington, Ms. Hartley, and Ms. Harvey as well. Thank you, Ezra. You're going to be sitting up here one day. I just want you to know. Tinley, Maya, and Ava, and Macy. Thank you all. Next, we will go to a presentation from Ms. Callanan about Ed Rising. Gonna be a tough act to follow. I'm ready. We're not a, we're not as cute as they are, so <laughs> we'll try. Um, I am Danielle Callanan. I'm the teaching professions instructor, educators rising teacher leader, and an instructional coach at the Sling County Career Center. And I'm Presley Duncan. I'm a junior in the teaching professions block, and I'm also in educators rising. Mm. Uh, so we just want to share a little bit about our program and what we've been doing this year. Uh, so this is a grow your own program for our district as well as um, all of Saline County and so yeah so it is offered to juniors and seniors again it's a three-hour block and it's for anyone interested in exploring a career in education currently I have students from Marshall and Sweet Springs but in the past I've also had Malta Bend and Slater students as well um, this year I have 12 students and these are all the topics we learn about. We talk about why become a teacher, what are some careers in education, ethics, classroom management, child development, barriers to education, lesson planning, history of education. Um, they also do lots of observations because it's hands-on. We want them to be in classrooms and they can earn dual credit through Missouri Valley College. Our practicum experience, they started that in February, so it's two days a week. Um, they can work in pre-K through eighth grade, and it's their choice. We do observations in the fall, so then they can decide what grade level they're most interested in. Um, you know, I have some kids who thought preschool is not for me. We went and observed, and then they're like, never mind, I love it. So they were surprised. It's still not for me. I'm glad that's what they want to do. I like the big kids. Um, and so it's been fantastic. They get, kind of get to choose. I avoid putting with the high school kids, because I want them to be seen more as a teacher rather than, this is my peer in the classroom, why are they trying to help me? So it, it works out well when they're with kids who are a little bit younger. Um, they help grade papers, they assist students and the teacher, they can teach lessons, and they can also attend a field trip. So I'm gonna let Presley kinda let her tell you about what she enjoys about this part of our class. Okay, so I do my practicum experience here. I'm with Mrs. Miles, so I have preschool. Um, there are a handful, I will say, but it takes a lot of energy. Um, I taught a lesson a couple, or yesterday, two days ago. Yesterday, yesterday. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yesterday about the solar eclipse, because, of course, that was yesterday. We had to go outside, and the preschoolers, so they like to take off their glasses and everything, so it's <laughs> not in trouble, but it's okay. <laughs> um, I love them. I love preschool. They're so sweet. They give lots of hugs. I just absolutely love it, so I'm very excited I got to, ex I get to experience this right now. So that's kind of been all of their favorite parts so far. I have 12 students this year, and their favorite part of class is that practicum experience. Um, so instead of coming into my room for 
the three hour block on those two days a week, they go to a classroom and they're in there working and working with the kids and they absolutely love it. Um, so program growth, so I, I took over this program. This is our fifth year. Um, it's my fourth year doing it. So in 2020, um, I had eight students enrolled. You can see us in the masks up there um, doing our observations. In 2021, I had six students. And then 2022, I had eight. And then this year is the most I've had, and we have 12. And they, I cannot brag enough about all these kids that I have got to have in class and welcome to the teaching profession. They are so fabulous. Um, and this year's group is no different. So I'm very fortunate to have them. Um, so where are they now? Some of my graduates, uh, they're not to the classrooms yet, because again, this is my fourth year, so they're not quite done with school. Um, however, I do have one, Ilse Benitez. I'm gonna brag on her. She is student teaching at Beaker Middle School this year. And she was hired to teach at the high school next year and do math. And so she was my first um, that I had and the first to go through the program. And now she's going to be working for us. And I could not be more excited to have such a great colleague. So I know she'll do fabulous. Um, I also have another student who's currently employed as a paraprofessional at Spainhower right now. And three others who work as substitutes within the, within the district when they're not in school, so they are all going to college currently to become educators. Um, so that's been fantastic to see that growth, and you know they'd be happy to come back here when they're done. So, educators rising. This is our CTSO, which is our Career and Technical Student Organization with the Career Center. Um, for this, if you're in the class, you're also in the club. That is kind of our requirement for our program. We have monthly meetings, we do activities each month, we do service projects, so we did a book drive and donate, got gently used books donated, um, and we came and read to the preschool here in December and donated books to each preschooler, and they got a bookmark, and they were very excited to take that book home. So that was kind of our big service project. Uh, we attend conferences at UCM and Mizzou, and there's also scholarships they can earn through the National Association of Educators Rising, and we compete. And that's kind of a big part of our club and our class, is our state competition. Uh, so these are just some of our activities. We've done a scavenger hunt, and they went through the high school and took fun photos, which were very entertaining. Um, they probably won't be pleased that I put that on there, so I hope the world sees it. And we did a Halloween movie night, not a scary movie, but if you've seen Coraline, I will never watch it again. It was terrifying. It was a cartoon, but I'm not a fan. <laughs> and then um, we did a Thanksgiving dinner, and that was a lot of fun. So we've done quite a few different activities each month. The students vote at our meeting, and they, they pick what we do each month. Um, so our competition. They, we competed in March at the Educators Rising State Conference. In Fulton, Missouri, uh, the top 10 at state qualified for nationals, and our nationals are June 27th through July 2nd. Um, and I want to thank Ms. Staley for coming because she actually came and presented at the conference to the Educators Rising members, so that was really neat for them to see her there. Um, this is how we placed, and so I had seven students place first. So we kind of uh, ran away with all the awards. It was fantastic. Uh, three of those students, Sophia, Cheyenne, and Claire, they worked together and wrote a paper, so their first place um, is shared, but they all received first for their paper. Um, there's teachers up there that worked with our students, so I'm gonna let Presley kind of tell you about her project. Uh, she did Exploring Administration Careers with Kelly Callanan. So I shadowed him for eight hours. And I interviewed him and asked him, you know, basic questions, why he wanted to become an administrator and all that good stuff. <laughs> and I wrote a whole presentation about him and I presented it at State. I got first in my competition. I just kind of explained to the judges who he was and what he does and how he impacts my life and everything that he does with his students and all of his relationships I'm going to take carry on and have those strong relationships with my students. It was very, it was such a good um, experience to have because I saw him interact with a bunch of different people. We had run errands all the time and didn't really know how busy an athletic director is, but they run lots of errands. So <laughs> I just really enjoyed having that opportunity to do that. And it was one of the best things about Educators Rising was being able to do that. So. 
So yeah, like I said, if they placed in the top 10 at state, which everybody did, um, they did phenomenal. And so they've all qualified for the national competition. Um, so this is them up on stage with everybody got a medal. It was very exciting. Everybody of my group, not everybody there got a medal, but all of our group got a medal. So that was thrilling experience. Um, I don't think I could be more proud of them. Honestly, they make my job super easy. They're, they're fantastic and they're willing to work hard and put in the time and effort to practice. Um, so with that, they have qualified for the national competition in June in Washington, DC. And so we are currently fundraising for that. So if you've heard or seen us around, um, that's us needing some funds to get to Washington, D.C. Uh, we've teamed up with AR Classy Creations, and we're currently selling freshies, which are the things you can put in your car, and they smell real nice. And I have one in my linen closet, and it's amazing. I recommend them. Just get one. Um, and freeze-dried candy. And then um, community businesses, as well as many individuals, have donated to our program to help us. Um, in the fall, we did a kickball tournament to raise some money as well. Uh, but we've been so grateful for the support we've received, but we're still working on getting donations to get, um, you know, 12 students and myself to Washington, D.C. And then... Do you I know how much you still need, by the way? About 7000 7, Would cover all of our expenses. Um, in 2022, I took the first group to actually get to travel to nationals, and so we went to Washington, D.C. We went all that way just to get a picture of a white squirrel. Just can't take the Sling County out of them when you take them out of state. Uh, so anyway, that was us in D.C. They competed. Um, I had two students there place in the top 10 in the nation. So that was amazing. Uh, Lily Wade took third and Taylor Boyd took fourth in the nation. It was phenomenal. The year before um, was a virtual competition, but Kylie Allen took first in the nation for that one. And again, I, they're great. They do the work. It's fantastic. Uh, last year we went to Orlando, Florida. We were able to do some fun things while we were there. Went to SeaWorld. Also took them to the beach. Most of them never been to the beach. And so that, that was an exciting experience that most of those students from rural Missouri wouldn't have gotten to do otherwise. And I had one place in the top 10 in the nation, uh, Lexi Christensen. She's actually taking it again this year. She's from Sweet Springs. She took ninth in the nation in her competition. Again, these kids are phenomenal. They do great things, and I know they're going to make outstanding teachers. And so hopefully we see them on the stage in DC this year. You guys have any questions? I do have an observation. Uh, very good presentation. I really appreciated the follow-up and seeing that the program's working and we're getting people back in the Marshall School system as a result of this program. That was very impressive. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry we're not as cute as little guys. <laughs> we try. Thank you all you're, very much. You're helping Thank out you. even more because you're returning people back to the classroom. And here, so that's fantastic. So, when I share you. out the notes from the meeting tonight, I'll be sure to share out your fundraising gap, and we'll make sure we find that somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, moving on to people who may be even less attractive up front, we'll have the superintendent report. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. Not to reelect. Just you the super. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Presley, Miss Callahan. Thank you. Okay, I won't even let that hurt my feelings. My, my daughter told me I was old and needed to dye my hair this morning when we were leaving the house, so <laughs> self-esteem was shot down right out, right out of the gate this morning. Um, all right, my report isn't super long tonight, but I will ask for your apologies. I need to jump around and hit a few topics. Uh, but first, I want to thank our spotlights. I know that it takes a little time to have our spotlights, but I think it's really great to celebrate the teaching and learning that what it, that is really what it's all about. And I'm very proud of our Ed Rising group. Um, and Ms. Callanan and what they're doing. So we have had grant dollars to pay for that trip in the past, and uh, that's not going to last forever. It's, it's really pretty much gone right now, actually, as they fund this trip. So we will make sure and get creative in how we find a way to get them there. And I appreciate that they have taken the initiative and been fundraising as well. That's phenomenal. 
So I'm going to jump right into it first with an announcement. <clears throat> I was supposed to give this announcement last month, and I'm glad that I didn't because it actually got backed up a little bit. It was supposed to be this weekend that we would be having this youth heart screening at the high school, and it's been backed up to May and June dates. And so I'm just going to put this out there that it's www.myheartcheck.org. This was done locally at Missouri Valley, and 400 students were screened. We're going to do it for students uh, ages 8 through 18. And it's an opportunity to prevent children who, unfortunately, we hear increasingly uh, about students who something happens with their heart and they pass away in the middle of class, school, ball games, et cetera. And this is intended to catch those defects with young hearts and prevent that from happening. So uh, I know that if there are financial constraints, um, the Lance family is offering to front people some money as their son was a, one of the lucky few who avoided uh, having their heart cost them their life and they want to help prevent others. So they're doing that in conjunction with a family from Lincoln, Missouri, whose son did pass away. And they have brought this organization to us here locally. I think it's a great thing and it could truly and literally save lives. So I encourage people to visit that website as we've got time to sign up for the May and June dates. All right, I'll jump right into what's probably more, more uh, easily referred to as boring information. But for some of our staff, I believe they're going to find this uh, important and will hopefully appreciate the explanation. We have talked a lot about job descriptions the last couple of months and as a board, we have also talked about a few things that Marshall Public Schools has been doing that really isn't compliant and needs to be changed. And that would include uh, what I'm about to talk about right now because we're going to try and fix this. And I'm going to try and explain it as quickly as possible, long and the short. A certified teacher in public education can qualify for tenure. And so our job descriptions need to say exempt or non-exempt going back to the law that provides that ability to obtain tenure. If a person working for a public school district is not eligible to obtain tenure, then they uh, fall under guidelines of the Department of Labor. The Department of Labor says that anyone who is not tenure eligible cannot be salaried if they make less than $35,568, or if they're on a salary schedule, which all, most all public school employees are on a salary schedule, that begins at less than $35,568. The Department of Labor has been talking for two years about increasing that minimum to $55,000, which would mean that we're going to go from not entirely compliant to way outside of compliant. And if they adjust it, it will be in November of this coming year when we're in the middle of our contracts. So we have talked to the people that would be affected and the ones that are really falling under the scope are our bus drivers and our central office 12 month administrative assistants. Uh, so we need to fix it but we're also talking about some of our most important and longest most loyal employees that we've had that do not want to see us change, re change the way they've been paid, reduce the amount that they've been paid and so everything I'm going to tell you about, if you heard nothing else, I want to say to you and to our central office staff and our bus drivers who are affected, they are not going to lose pay. And it is not going to be affected how they get paid. We just are going to, we're going to change the way we, we do this so that we're compliant. Um, but we're going to make sure they don't lose any money. Not overall, not from month to month, paycheck to paycheck. That's our goal. So uh, I said all of that to explain for this reason, one of the policies that you have is paid holidays. And I'm asking for the Board of Education to look at the paid holidays for our bus drivers and our central office 12-month employees and extend additional holidays to them over the breaks, such as Christmas and Thanksgiving. For many, many years, for some of these employees for decades, they have been able to expect to get paid for that time off. Uh, they work some of the longest, hardest hours on some of the coldest, snowiest days. And it also, I believe, incentivizes to be a bus driver or to move up from the building level administrative assistant position to a central office administrative position. And we've learned in the last two years that's not terribly attractive to parents and employees who work in the buildings. All they see is, I'm going to work 12 months and I'm not going to have a lot of perks. I hope that this creates perks that helps us retain and to recruit people into those positions. And that's why I'm going to be asking for it. And I wanted to present it tonight because I know that some of our employees, our bus drivers perhaps in particular, are really nervous that we're messing things up for them. That has been working well. And we do not want to lose these people. We appreciate them. And they serve us well. Any questions about that? Exciting Department of Labor lesson tonight. 
I hope that'll help our employees and I'll recap all of that. <coughs> I'm not gonna read all of this word for word. I've spoken a lot to the board about it. I'm gonna clarify a few things that I've been getting in feedback from the staff and give you a chance to just ask questions. Uh, again, thinking about recruitment and retention, we did not have a cap on how many days of leave an employee at Marshall Public Schools receives. We would like to put a cap on that and we're doing that with the feedback that we received from the employees. Uh, we haven't gone 100% with their feedback. They actually selected 50 days of leave when they gave us their feedback. But some of our most veteran employees, when we went out and had face-to-face -face staff meetings, were saying, hey, we, we may not be the voice of the majority, but we have the majority of those built-up days and we would really like the cap to be higher. So we listened to them, even though it wasn't the majority of the vote, they're the ones who are gonna be the majority affected. So we made it 90. And currently we pay $20 a day for unused leave when someone leaves, which isn't very much. It kind of incentivizes us to take off all your days before you retire. Uh, we're raising it to 50. I wanted to raise it higher. I wanted to pay as much as we pay a substitute teacher to incentivize that they not have a substitute teacher, but it's frankly just too much money to do all at once. So we have to take a small baby step into this because we would be writing checks to everybody for every day over 90 days of leave this June. Uh, and it's, it's gonna be a pretty big check to do that. Uh, we've sent out, we didn't send out the policy itself, we sent out the ideas, the concepts, which is what you all received last month. What the Board of Education has tonight, kind of by the skin of our teeth, Ms. Reno worked on this with MSBA pretty much right up till the minute tonight, we've been revising these policies because we want to answer some questions the staff had, such as currently they get, uh, for example, let's say eight sick days and two personal a year, but our current policy says as they spend more time in the district, they convert more of those sick into personal, and they didn't want to see that lost. So we've built it into the actual policy that will be approved, not this month, but next, and I will share that out with all the staff this evening when I attach my notes from the, from the board meeting, and then I'll meet with teacher and staff representation for one more in person before the next board meeting to make sure, as I've told them, our goal is to make this good and appealing and something that you like, not the opposite. So they're gonna have plenty of chance for more feedback and I hope it will be a good thing. And I have gotten a lot of feedback. They very much appreciate the increase of how much those days are paid. Any questions about the leave policy? Yeah, I have one. Yeah. Is there any provision for uh, employees to donate their leave days to other employees? As currently stated, there isn't. There are some, some uh, policies out there that we could take from and offer that but it comes with a lot of complications and we've chosen to, to omit that and, and we haven't sought feedback for that. We've heard some staff who said that would be nice. My uh, indirect experience with that has been it sometimes causes problems. I think the nice uh, middle of the road for us is that with bereavement, that we're allowing them to uh, tie their sick leave to bereavement upon supervisor approval and they do not have to bank 90 days to request that. I think that gives them some flexibility in, in emergencies that matter most like Jack and I have talked about at length. So mm -hmm. uh, to answer your question, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, tuition grants update. This is pretty exciting as we have Ed Rising here presenting to us. We have some of those folks starting to get out of college, student teaching, we anticipate applying in the fall, and we are rolling out our first tuition reimbursement. We've allocated $9,000 this year to one person. Seven people have applied, and you all have received that electronically, and tonight you'll get it in hard copy uh, in closed session so we can answer your questions and you can go off for the next month and deliberate on that very tough decision. But I am looking forward to expanding this program to our young students, like the 12 we have right now, into the classroom in the future. I think it's a very good investment of our funds. I'm glad the board's selecting that, not me. That's gonna be hard. Uh, the HAB Center. Uh, Mr. Ranke will give a construction update, but I just want to give a, an update on fact versus fiction. Uh, not that, you know, sometimes the squeaky wheel gets too much of our attention, but I want to acknowledge, I believe they call themselves the Friends of Miami who have a, mu a museum where they have some, some items preserved and available and on display. They contacted us several months ago about any antiques that were left in the Tudor house before we tore it down that they would like. One of them was an antique loom that was still in there and it would require being torn apart, disassembled, I should say torn apart would be, be a bad use of words right now, but uh, it would need to be disassembled to be removed and we, no one knew how to do it without maybe breaking it. So we waited until they, the house came down and they actually opened the side of the house up and we brought the loom all out in one piece safe and unharmed without having to worry about reassembly. 
We also had a, a flag that was, uh, had some significance to the people who worked at the HAB Center, some of whom are associated with the Friends of Miami, which is why these things are ending up there. And then some other people reached out wanting to know about a team bridle for horses. We found it in the basement. We've removed that and protected it. And uh, there were some doors and various other things that were also rehomed to people who reached out and asked for it, and it had sentimental value. I know there's been a lot of discussion on social media. I don't think they're probably listening tonight, or they would have known much of what I don't think they did in their posts, which is that we did our best to preserve this, and we made this decision not uh, lightly, but after many months of deliberation and discussion. So uh, I'm glad to see those things going to a safe home, and I just wanted to mention that to the public that is hearing us tonight. Okay, geofencing. <clears throat> I said I would jump all over the place and I am keeping my promise. I uh, alluded to this a few times. This is something that'll come through on bills in the future, <clears throat> depending on dis the decisions we make in the next week or so. But geofencing was used by the Vote Yes Committee when we ran our levy. And what geofencing basically does is if you walk <laughs> into a Martin Center and you vote in Marshall in the last six years, we can target every phone that did that with geofencing with today's technology and any phone that would cross that threshold again or in the past or in the future, we can target them and we can send targeted ads to them. So for people who sometimes think your phone is listening to you, it in fact does keep track of you, where you are, where you've been. And uh, we've utilized this technology now for how we're advertising for our teaching positions. And uh, KMMO has, has now has a facet that's doing geofencing. So does our local newspaper actually is starting to get into it as well. But some quick statistics here that for two months we've done this, 700 people uh, were targeted uh, effectively, meaning that they received some advertisement about Marshall Public Schools, and those 700 people were on university campuses in Missouri crossing the threshold of their education buildings. And this got pushed out to their phone because of where they were. Everyone within 75 miles that was searching for education jobs received these notifications. And then the more they clicked on it, the more they would receive it, which is how this stuff works through the algorithms and various things that I don't understand. Mm -hmm. But the data that I found real interesting after meeting with them today, 200 people saw, saw our advertisements display. Another 200 people have seen us on Snapchat. And 18 people then clicked on our YouTube videos, which have recently been posted on Facebook to just speak about what it's like to work at Marshall Public Schools. And we had 18 people quick apply. Uh, but total impressions, people who just saw it scroll across their feed in some way, fit over 51,000 people for our advertisements the last two months saw our impressions. And, uh, and I should mention of the 18 quick apply, which we certainly had some glitches with getting everything to work, but two math teachers were in the quick apply, meaning that they were looking for a math job, certified for math, and they at least gave us their name, their email, and said, contact me, maybe I'll apply, which is a start, because it's getting harder and harder to fill these jobs. So what we'll decide in these next two weeks or so of these 18 quick apply, we want to see how many can we get to the table, can we fill positions, are they hard to fill positions, and if so, we may continue to, to advertise this way for another one to two months, but it's expensive. It's about $5,000 a month every time we commit to doing it. But if it's reaching this number of people and filling those hard to fill positions, it may be worth it. So something we'll discuss more and something that'll come across your check ledger. <clears throat> Any questions about that? Okay, I want to wrap things up with, uh, which isn't super quick, but I'll go pretty quick. Another legislative update. House Bill 2430 has passed the Senate, is now in the House. This is the one that would cut personal property tax by 7%. So that really has traction that is concerning. Uh, I'll highlight the high and the low estimates for MPS. 10% if it passes, if that's 10% of our personal property, it'll be $243,000 a year. And if it's 30% of our personal property, that will be $729,000 a year that immediately comes out of our funding. Um, Senate Bill 799, which I spoke at length about last month, is still uh, on the calendar, and so is open enrollment. Both of those have implications to us financially. So there's still plenty of things to concern us out there. But this one wasn't on the plate last month to discuss, and that is Senate Bill 727. After the legislature came back from its spring break, this became the omnibus bill that really got a lot of traction and started moving quickly. In fact, I don't know the results of it, but it was in committee tonight, which may move it forward. Mr. Gregory, our local representative, actually chairs that committee, and uh, I, I will say I'm grateful to him. I'm not at all saying anything negative about him or any other legislatures. There have been a lot of roundtable discussions with our local legislatures, 
And I do appreciate that they've come to the table and had conversations and been listening to us. Uh, this particular bill, unfortunately, from higher up leadership has been blocked from revisions that would make it more palatable to public education. So today I did ask all of our st uh, staff and our Board of Education to make contact for us and we'll, we'll find out tomorrow what, what came of that. Um, but the long and the short is that this would impact uh, us in a neg various negative ways from uh, expanding charter schools in Boone County without any kind of a vote. It ties things to transportation, which is a pretty clear indication that the legislature knows that it is probably coming, that they're gonna cut our funding formula, uh, which is something I have to take into account as I make budget decisions for the next year. Um, and it just goes on and on. I won't uh, keep you at length because I can see you're the tired in your eyes, but uh, I wanna jump to a positive and then talk about our finances. So first I wanna brag on Ms. Durham, who has stepped into this, this role of Director of Student Services and Educational Finance, I think is the title we gave to that. Uh, it just rolls off the tongue, it's not real short, uh, but it covers a lot of things. And she isn't officially in that role yet, but I, I do wanna say thank you to the board and thank you to her. She's been uh, kind of getting her feet wet, so to speak, as she's been a part of our budget process and some of the information I'm bringing you. One of the ones I wanted to mention first, uh, we just, she and I just kind of darkened that door today where she is gonna start helping get fiscal notes to Jefferson City. You know, you think about a lot of our surrounding school districts that have 200 kids or less. Um, to, for their people to have the time to say to our legislatures, this is the financial impact of the bill you're considering. It's something they need. Uh, Senate Bill 727, uh, the first day I think it was that one, it might have been 20, it might have been one of the other ones, but uh, they, they come to the floor to debate this, to pass it out of the House or the Senate, and they have no idea of the financial implications to districts. And the day that that happened, our educational lobbyists said, no superintendents were present, no fiscal notes were reported, and if not for one senator being present and saying, let's just wait a minute and get more information, they would have had no idea the implication of what they were passing to public education. So. That's exciting. That's the first thing that's exciting about her role is to be able to be a point of contact <clears throat> to not just fight for public education in Marshall, but abroad. And then she has calculated, I want to give her credit, a lot of our spreadsheets and calculations, projections, et cetera, uh, none of which is, you know, entirely her responsibility yet in the least because it isn't her job yet, but she's been willing to step up and, and do a lot of things, including reconciliation and just be open to learning and discussion. So thank you to her and the board. I think that's going to bring good things to us. And it's helped with all this stuff I'm about to say in terms of numbers. Uh, $260,000, Mr. Ranke is going to talk about. We know that the insurance decision you all vote on and approve tonight will save the district. Uh, salary and policy changes. So I'm talking about the leave policy in conjunction with salary increases to certified and salary. Our early projection is that that is going to be $377,850 we put into teacher staff salaries as well as the paid leave that we're increasing. Uh, that's more than, and we promised this to the staff, whatever we're saving the district in insurance, we're gonna put it back into salaries. And we did plus about $110,000 more. The base is increasing for Marshall Public Schools with what you approved tonight to over $40,000. That, by the way, should make us competitive with all of our neighbors. I think we're paying equal to or more than everyone that's the Dahlia for the best information we have on what they're paying next year. Somebody might increase something and and make me wrong, but that's what we know right now. And then let's not forget that our employees make insurance elections where they pay beyond what the district covers to the amount of $105,000. When Mr. Ranke presents that for your approval, they're gonna have options that no longer require those additional elections, which will be a direct savings to them of another 105,000. Considering we're budgeting for the fiscal cliff year and where we were this well, year and a half ago, I am really, really, really proud of and happy for Marshall Public Schools, and I hope our staff and community are happy too. Um, okay, trying to wrap it up here. I know I'm going quick, stop me any time for questions, but I don't want anybody to fall asleep. Reserve goal. Last year, this Board of Education set a minimum <coughs> reserve goal for the Marshall Public School District of 20%. I think when I came in here July of 22, we were at 12% reserve. Uh, we've We've reached our goal of a minimum of 20%, and I've been talking to surrounding school districts saying, where, where are you with your reserve with all this one-time COVID money, <clears throat> the fiscal cliff that is still happening, we still have some financial concerns, and we really have financial concerns about what the legislature is gonna do. Uh, 
I can tell you that a lot of our districts, one, has seen their revenues drop already. Ours hasn't dropped yet like I anticipated, which is good, but perhaps an anomaly and it's coming. And the other thing is that Fulton, Mexico, uh, some of our district conference schools, they're at 45, 50% reserves to prepare for the cliff. <coughs> so I'm not gonna ask that we raise our minimum reserve, but I just want an understanding or questions that should it go up to 30, 35% with that COVID money that comes in? I don't think that's anything that should scare us until we get past the fiscal cliff, get past the construction, all the unknowns. You know, they say save for a rainy day. We know there's storms in the forecast. I think a higher reserve is good. We don't need to raise our minimum because it didn't give us a maximum. But if we end up around 35%, I would feel a whole lot better. And I hope that's where we end up when we get to our ASBR at the end of June. Any questions about that? Other just heads up, because May and June is where we start transferring our funds and getting things in place. We've learned through a lot of our reconciliations that Grace and Debbie have been doing since Debbie became our new bookkeeper a month and a half ago. And Grace knew that this new position is coming. We got to work on the reconciliations that we honestly should have done a lot sooner, but we've had a lot of turnover in that area and we just, we just couldn't get it done. We, we had like you know taxes to do and things like that that just took priority over reconciliations. But through this process, we've discovered that in 2020, which there was a pandemic going on, uh, we did not do our transfer from fund one to fund four. And that's like about 7% of your weighted average daily attendance. Um, and we verified that with DESE today. So that is something we will probably go back and revise along with uh, that we will probably be discussing. There is a, an opportunity to transport for in addition to the maximum if you're planning to build a transportation department. That's something that's probably gonna end up in our long range facility plan that we're finishing up this summer. And if it is, we'll be discussing moving that. I think for at this moment for next year, it's 54 or $55,000 allowable in addition to the maximum transfer. And I think it would be good to get some of that over to our reserve. When it's all said and done, if what ends up in our reserve is some of this ESSER COVID one-time money, then that's a place for one-time expenditures that makes sense to get it to. So. Those are things coming in our discussions and I'll let you formulate your questions if you have any. Like I said, 12% reserve is where I believe we were July of 22. Currently we're at about 25%. Uh, I can tell you that exactly on June the 30th when we finish our ASBR, because that's when we know for sure each year, but that's a great place to be. And, and our base is finally over 40. Really excited about that. And that's a picture of our quick, quick apply link on our website. And if you haven't had a chance to watch those YouTube videos, go to the district website, scroll down. I think Laura Jacoby's face is one of the ones that pop up first and then click on the link YouTube. I think there's seven of them. Just click on those and check those out. It was, it was really well done. Um, thanks to Daniel for doing that uh, and putting it together for us. That is my report. If there's no questions, I'll stop talking now and have a seat. Yay. <laughs> So on the uh, change of the fund balances, we can go back to 2020 and still move those and that doesn't have any kind of penalty or implications since we've moved them since then? It means a lot of work for Debbie uh, because we're gonna have to adjust our ASVRs and our ending and beginning fund balances and then submit a little paperwork to our auditors. <laughs> but it's $1.1 $1. 1 million that we can move mm -hmm. and it would be a really smart move for us to make because we're gonna have, I think it's about $2.2 .2 million in ESSER three final allocation come back to us it's gonna make it look like our reserves uh, inflated and it's gonna potentially be in the wrong fund. So it's 1.1, mm -hmm. it's worth the work to get it to fund for. Mm -hmm. Good question. Okay, um, tonight I don't really have a lot of new information. I want to catch up on some old information. Uh, have some things um, for the second reading that are up for approval that I just want to touch on quick. So, uh, district health insurance. We've been talking on, about this for I don't know quite a while. Uh, last month went pretty in depth in some numbers. Uh, I won't go into that in depth this this month. Um, but we do have the plans tonight and uh, recommendations. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. 
Uh, also want to uh, just touch real quick, uh, we brought the CSIP goal number four for major capital uh, and technology and, and goal number five, uh, budgeting for major capital. And then tonight I'd like to ask, uh, presented on those last month, ask for your approval uh, to move forward with those plans uh, this month. So let's start off with health insurance. Um, uh, again, I want to thank the committee. It was a, it was a long process since October. Um, it was a good process, learned a lot, a lot of information. Uh, as I presented last month, we would like to um, go with a new broker. We would go with standalone. We would leave the consortium we are in. Uh, this, we would, the broker would be the Wall Street Group. Um, and then when they went out and shopped, they brought us several plans back. Our committee felt Cigna. Uh, brought us the best plans. So in your board packet, I do have uh, the plans and the rates. Um, currently, uh, Marshall School Public School District has provided three plans. Uh, it's been a uh, base plan of a $4,000 PPO, and that was actually been a $4,000 PPO flex point, which had some limitations. Uh, <coughs> then they had the buy-up plan, the $1,500 PPO, and then they, we also offered the HSA 6,500 high deductible. Um, I asked, you know, we had a lot of comments from our employees about more options, more options, and that's a two-edged sword. Uh, but working with Wall Street, we were able to bring a couple more options. Um, so we would also like to add a 3,000 buy-up PPO, and then also a 3,200 buy-up HSA. Uh, so they're both good plans. Um, our base plan will still be that 4,000 uh, 4, PPO, uh, and that would be if the district decides to fully fund that, and I'll get to the next slide, that's at $626.87 per employee per month, um, and then everything else. So just to give a quick example, uh, if uh, right now if an employee wanted to buy up to uh, the 1,500 PPO, it's almost $900. Um, and then you can see here uh, with the new rates and going with Cigna, it's, if they, an employee wanted to buy up, it's like $45 a month at $669. So uh, that's where when we talked about the $260,000 in savings to the district, there's also if employees want to buy up, there's also definite savings for, for employees. So um, if you have any questions on the numbers, I think we pretty went went really in depth the last time. Um, so I will also recommend if you vote to approve these in the in the Cigna plan, um, also recommend to for the the board to uh, continue to fully fund our base plan for our employees. Uh, at that six hundred and twenty six eighty seven per month, that's seven thousand five hundred and twenty two dollars and forty four cents per employee per year. Um, so like I said, for the next school year, that will actually be a savings to the Marshall Public School District, around $260,000. And the approximate cost of the insurance to the district, I don't uh, know if everybody understands how expensive health insurance is, but that's about $2.6 million that costs the district to fully fund that. But it is, um, it is important to our employees. Um, I think it is good for our employees. So I will recommend to, to um, do that base plan uh, when we get to that agenda. Does anybody have any questions on health insurance? I know that kind of was quick, but spent a lot of time on it last month. And this, this is the same plan we talked about <clears throat> last month. Every, everything in this area is that is covered. correct. Okay. Yes. Yep. Um, and that also we will have if the board approves it tonight. Um, the Wall Street Group is sending me information. Uh, we will be pushing out to employees soon. And part of that will be to check um, their providers and, and make sure that, you know, if there's a doctor somewhere we don't know about that they use, um, you know, they can let us know. And then a lot of times the brokers will go to that doctor if they're not in network and work with that provider to get them <laughs> in the network. So there's things that, that they will do and that we can do to, to help employees out. Um, and also, if it's approved tonight, and after that information goes out, just so everybody knows and our employees that are watching tonight, uh, at our next PD day, uh, the brokers will be here and Cigna will be here, 
and we will start explaining the new options and then they'll be here for the next couple days working with uh, our employees for enrollment. So it will be coming pretty quick. Any other questions? All right. Okay, um, rolling into our governor's plan, touched on this last month. Uh, this was our goal number four. We talked about technology, the rotations. We've been really working hard at this the last, uh, last year and then did a lot of improvements going into this year and then want to continue that. Um, so as budget allows, this is the plan. Uh, to get everything done that we want to do, and of course the budget allows on, on how things come, uh, the price is about $692,000. That is continuing to update our Chromebooks, our servers, uh, and then especially what I hit on last month is updating our teacher uh, computers throughout the district and getting on rotations there. Uh, so it will be a good thing. Technology is not cheap, um, but it is, it is you know, things we will need to do. Um, or else we'll fall behind. So I'll ask for that approval. Um, also our capital expenditures. Uh, these are some plans, some major capital expenditures that I covered last month, uh, about $214,000 as budget allows. Uh, kind of listed this out, some different projects we want to do throughout each of our buildings. Um, this is separate from the construction and the energy savings. Uh, this is also in your board packet. Um, for approval tonight, um, and then we'll go from there. Does anybody have any questions on either one of those? All right. Um, also, just some summer projects we have. This really doesn't cost any money. Just kind of wanted to throw those out there. We got a lot of cleanup in, in some of the campuses. Um, so we're going to have that, and then we're going to have some painting projects. Uh, that I covered last month would be about $23,000. We want to get some painting, continue to update the painting throughout the district, make things look fresh. Uh, a lot of this will be done in-house. Some of this will be done, we'll contract out. Is that box just highlighted because that's where it was? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Sorry. And I keep thinking you can speak on that. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have any questions on any of those for, for approval? All right. Like I said, no new information tonight. Uh, but I did want to cover some facility updates that, that's been happening throughout the district. Mm -hmm. um, our lead water sampling has been done. We actually were going to do that this summer. Uh, they had some openings, so we did that over spring break when the kids weren't here. Uh, we did not take, there was not as many samples as we needed to take. I think we were originally around five to 700, and we ended up about 300. So that will be good on the financial side of it. Um, so now all those samples have been taken and sealed off and they have been sent to the labs and we'll be going through the testing process now. So I would, um, it's probably going to be a couple more weeks before we get anything back on that. Uh, but when we do, uh, we will go through all those results and then we'll have to, you know, however they come back, we will either retest or remediate and then uh, get that information out for the public. So. When they were taking the samples, did it, was did anything pop up that might be a problem further down the road? Not that they said. No, I mean basically when they came in to take samples, they flushed it out, flushed the, you know, like the faucet out for a while, uh -huh. um, and then came, bottled it up, and sealed it up, and that labeled it, and that was it. So well, no, we'll nothing know. that, um, no problems that they could well, tell. We'll know more next month after we get the results back. Harry, I think is where you're looking at. <laughs> sure, a hundred year old building. More money going down the road. Problems. <laughs> mandate, mandate, mandate. Never funded. So we'll we'll get the get that back and get an update and then go from there. And there's a there's different remediation things we can do that will be cost effective, I believe, if if we do have some that come back over the the limit. So um the Navitas work, our energy, uh, our energy audit, and our energy savings uh, work is going really well. Uh, they actually decided to come in over spring break too, get a little bit ahead of the game. So they did a lot of what they call envelope work, and that was throughout some of our buildings. And when they talk about envelope work, it's the ceiling, the caulking, putting some um, door sweeps and adjusting things, making sure the drafts aren't there. 
So that was good. Uh, they, they were in the district for six days and um, they got quite a bit of work done. Uh, one of the big things that we are on schedule with that right now is the supply chain um, and getting all the, the equipment in and everything. So right now everything is not in for all the summer projects, but it is expected to be. So fingers crossed that we get all that equipment in um, and then can stay on schedule there. Um, that's also with our, uh, um, the big thing with that is our career center project with the HVAC. So and I think that's the big thing, getting that unit in and that should be on its way. So, okay, uh, if you've been out to the uh, Northwest campus, Northeast campus. <laughs> uh, by, the, by the Spainhower building, if you have been out there, there's been a lot of activity lately. Um, things are going really well. It is very early in the project, but <laughs> so let's just put that out there. But everything is really on schedule. Um, I know we need money desperately, uh, you know, especially for our area farmers. Uh, but the rain holding off has been really good for construction lately. So. Uh, they have, uh, have a lot of the, the site work, the actual site work done. If you've been out there, a lot of dirt was moved um, to level that place off. And uh, they actually were starting to put the piers in today. So that was um, be a good thing to get done. And once the piers are in, they can come in with the, with the pad. So uh, things are moving right along. Um, the uh, teardown of some of the structures are moving right along. They're actually starting on some of the back buildings um, today, so that'll be good and help us move forward, move forward with everything. We did reroute traffic out at Spainhower. Um, so we started that Monday, so that was a little bit of an adjustment. We put another road in, uh, but everybody I think is it's going to get used to that and just a different way of routing to where we don't have to can separate our, our parents and our construction traffic is the goal. So things are going along pretty well right now. Does anybody have any questions? All right. That is all I have tonight. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rinky. Um, under new business, um, we have four items there. If we need to break them up for anybody's um, decision making, that would be fine. Um, that's the approve the Cigna Health Insurance Premium Plans as presented. A move approve the district paid health insurance portion at six twenty six eighty seven per employee. Uh, approved proposed certified and non-certified pay scales, which were in your packets as well, and the approval of the capital IT and summer projects, of which have been discussed the last couple of months by Mr. Rinke. I'll make a motion we approve. Second. Second. All right. That happened fast. Were there any <laughs> questions about uh, any of that information? I know we've kind of looked over it quite a bit and had it in great detail, and I know that uh, the... NEA and CTA had both uh, asked us to still make sure we were able to fully fund insurance and that was able to be withheld and also rolling that back over into our teacher salaries and certified staff salaries as Mr. Pettit outlined as well uh, with a little additional there to get everybody onto some pay scales and some things that look really in line when I was looking at them as far as very well spelled out as far as uh, the changes will happen, stepping over grades, the channels and such. Call a question. It looks like it wants up. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Or abstaining? Uh, underneath policy readings, uh, there are a lot of policy updates that were in your packet, of course. Um, some of those are for a third reading. Did you have capital and some things? Or did you do that with those? We did all four together. You did that one too, sorry. Yes, sir. Um, the bulk packet, um, MSBA policies, the leave policy, which was there for a second reading, uh, central office driver paid holidays, which was for a first reading, which you were looking to pass uh, these all next month. So please send your revisions in, as well as uh, tuition reimbursement requests, which we'll be looking at as well in close tonight because it is about particular employees and reimbursing uh, particular employees, not classes of employees. 
Hearing none, I will uh, seek a motion to move to closed session for the purpose of legal action, causes of action or litigation, hiring, firing, discipline, or promoting particular employees, preparation for negotiations with employee groups, and individually identifiable personnel records, performance ratings, or records pertaining to employees or applicants for employment. So move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. I'll start down here, Brett. Aye. 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 Down with Harry. Aye. 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 Aye.